Well, welcome to the old classic car channel and today we are at the Mulpus yesteryear rally steam rally lots of old lorries steam vehicles cars motorcycles tractors and so on we're just walking through the car park and spotted this lovely 2cv 1964 while behind us there's a triumph herald convertible for sale with an extra hard top at first from a distance i thought it was a herald coupe but it's a convertible. Not only is it a convertible, it is a 1360 convertible that is for sale. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. If you fancy a classic Herald, here we go. Right, well, we're in. So let's go have a quick look at the auto jumble before we do anything else. Mainly because that's the first thing that you see as you come in through the gate. Yes, it is. Now, we've not been to the Molpus Rally for several years, um, about 10 or 11 years ago. We actually attempted to bring Big Dodge here, but we failed to proceed on the way here, so we had to be unceremoniously towed home again. And then we tried again a year or two later, and we succeeded. We actually had it on display, and we took it around the arena, and that was all quite good fun. Um, but today, we just came along in a little standard, not booked in or anything, so uh, we just parked up in the main public car park area. But let's go and have a, let's go and have a route around and see what else is here. <laughs> Got the front end of a jet provost here. These were an RAF training aircraft back in the day. That's a bit of blurb about XN549. Right, this is a classic lorry section and commercial vehicles. Let's have a quick shift in. Now on the end here, we've got a 1947 Reliant three-wheeled van. What a neat little machine that is. Ideal for your local deliveries just after the war. Motorcycle base, clearly. This is a Reliant, they carried on making them until sort of the early 1950s. There's a steering wheel, is it? Uh, bought as a wreck and restored using as many original parts as possible. 748cc side valve, four cylinder engine, proper steering wheel, yeah. yeah it's not like the little Piaggio Apes which have the sort of scooter handlebars, don't they? Yeah. What's this up here? The ERF, judging by the mud flaps. Sure, it's something very tasty, and it is indeed GMR 93. Sorry, has it been to the midway? Has it? Yeah, it's a real Bobby Dazzler. Got a Series 3 Land Rover, that's one of the long wheelbase ones. Little Thames 300E. Side valve Ford powered FJS 163. I don't think I've seen this one before. Two tone blue. Really smart little side valve Ford. Such a rare survivor now. That's really tasty. I've got a gaggle of Land Rovers along here. Early Series 1, another Series 1. Many, many. Interesting old Land Rovers. Series 1 Club, that probably explains it. We've seen this Foden and the living van that it tows. A mighty, mighty caravan. We saw this one last at Smallwood Rally, I think. The vintage rally that's held there every year. I said if you're going to uh, camp over at a vintage rally, such as Molpus here in sunny Shropshire, then what better way than to be 
in something like that being towed by something like that there's some very dark clouds around so I'm going to scoot around right got a Bedford probably early 1950s Bedford I'm sure someone will know the exact model number of this long wheelbase twin wheels at the back reminds me of an O series but could be wrong but whatever it is it's a beautiful old lorry 1948 Foad and Coach several Fodens in fact along here British Rail we've seen before as well as this uh, cement marketing company I think we last saw that at the WEM Vehicles of Interest which is a video about also on the channel gorgeous duple bodied coach Bedford OB a Leyland steer so named because it's twin steer both front axle steer very nice indeed Ford D-series recovery truck and over here the Morris J-type van this half cab Foden is just a stunning stunning and very rare vehicle Next to that, Mark 1 Ford Transit. Next military, is this a Morris? Yes, Morris commercial badge there. That's a bit of a giveaway. Many of these old wartime vehicles were repurposed following the war because there was a shortage of new vehicles, so they lived on a second life in Civilian Street. Next to that. Thames 500E, very nice too, petrol engined. There was the 4D, which was the diesel version as well. Another stunning Bedford in, delivery of bots fuels. Bedford CF Mark I of the early 1970s. 4D series. Oof, got a bit of an oily ragger here. Wow. <laughs> what do you reckon to that? That does look very good on the outside. Yeah, it's an unusual mascot, isn't it? She needs to wrap up. It's chilly. Yes. <laughs> the is very colourful. It is, it's very colourful, isn't it? It's got mismatched race seats in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. So this is this is me really being you now, but I like the rope. Nice rope, yes. And that's really me being you. <laughs> uh, Don't know what you mean. That's all reflectors. Flexible. What's that? Flexible amps limited. Epping of Essex. <laughs> we do like a nice oily ragger. Really unusual cab. I'm guessing this has been imported from somewhere, maybe Malta or somewhere like that. What does it say? 1951 K-Type, believed to have been an ambulance originally before ending its working life as a laundry van. She's not going to get a paint job while I own her. It took 60 odd years to build this pattern. Ford looked a bit larger than Yeah, so it's obviously, had, it's obviously had a body that went across yeah. or above the cab. So it's got a, it's got a canvas, it's got a canvas roof on it to replace the body that would have been up there in its earlier life but what a great old truck that is I've never seen that before yeah I do like that one <laughs> straight six good yes right let's carry on got a double decker Leyland what is it 1966 the Leyland yeah Leyland diesel engine the Leyland lorry Austin, an FE Series 3 from 1959. Really oldie worldy original looking phone here. I see this one at many of the steam rallies that we go to. Harley's just admiring this magnificent scammel. Two wheel steering. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, twin steer. I spy a nice pyrene fire extinguisher in there. Just 
imagine these thundering up and down the A1, the great North Road in the 1950s. This wonderfully sign written ERF we've seen before many times, but let's have another look because we like a good bit of sign writing. No stick on vinyl here. Wow, we've got two beautiful vintage vans here. The nearest is quite an early Austin 7, lamps on the scuttle, as opposed to on the front wings. What a beauty that is. I know I go on about sign writing, but, you know, in the presence of art like that, you can't really help myself. Wow. Austin 7 C cab van 1924. Wow, that is quite early because the Austin 7 came out in 1922. Reportedly the oldest surviving originally constructed van in the country. It originates from Scotland as the original factory registration found in a barn over 20 years ago and has been restored to its former glory over a period of years. What a great rescue that is. That is just epic. If one a vintage van wasn't enough, look at this Model T, Ford Model T. It's right hand drive, so presumably this one was assembled from a kit of parts over at Trafford Park in Manchester where Ford had a plant, an assembly plant. I'm guessing that's where this one started out because it's a right hand drive, unless it's been brought in from Australia or somewhere like that. And the body could be Ford, I'm not quite sure, but. Yeah, possibly. But no, no. Again, wonderful, wonderful sign writing. This case deserves a sort of notice, doesn't it? It's very shiny, isn't it? I'm guessing that's the toolkit. Minimal instrumentation, minimal protection for the, the driver and his mate. Well, at least I've got a windscreen, but there's no side screens or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, you're slightly exposed to the elements, but at least you have a roof and the windscreen, so that's uh, better than nothing. But yeah, two beautiful old vans. Well, let's carry on along the line. A Bedford Ambulance, wartime era ambulance. Very smart, I've known this for probably 30 years. That's been going to shows that I know of next to that. What's this then? An international harvester. Beautifully turned out old truck. Another way, look at that. That is just stunning. It's worth coming to these events just to see these really early commercials because they don't come out all that often. You don't see them on the road runs very often, mainly because they're quite slow. So when you do see them at events like this, it's a real treat. It is, yeah. I mean, like I say, we brought Big Dodge here about 10 or 11 years ago, something like that. No? It's a bit of a it was an interesting day out, it was a bit wet. We overtook a line of uh, steamrollers. It, it may have been 20 because lorries were restricted to 20 miles an hour in those days. Yeah, you had to go in the steamroller, didn't you? Yeah, it was that It may have been that rally, but it was certainly here. So a quick peek inside. So it's a Morris commercial of the early 1920s, I guess. Nice little clock up there. Another pyrene or similar fire extinguisher. That is a nice clock. It's a beautiful truck, isn't it? Which would you have out of the this, the Austin 7 and the, the Model T?
Maybe the Austin 7. The Austin 7? Yeah. I think I'll have this. Beautiful, beautiful vehicle. Right. Got one of these rare flat fronted Albions. Albion Ken. I thought it might have been. The first name that sprang to mind was a Claymore, because I think they're flat fronted, but this is a Ken, apparently. Albion, Scottish manufacturer. It does look a bit like a milk float. Scottish manufacturer of commercial vehicles. And we've got an Austin LD here. This one I've seen over the years. Really original seat, if I remember. Yes. Yeah, that's seen some life. A <laughs> couple of Land Rovers here. So we've got a Series 3, probably a, what's this, Series 2 or 2A, a Morris pickup. Yeah. Another 67 Series 2A Land Rover. What's this, a late Series 2A, I think? Yeah, a late 2A. It's the very late 2As. Also had the headlights in the front wings, I think, which I didn't realise. There we go. Registered 20th of January 1970. A recreation of a vintage Scout Glory here. Mobile library based on an Austin chassis. Late 60s Morris, complete with, ooh, I'll start on the back, a Hotchkiss, a French Hotchkiss. Wow, that's a new one, I haven't seen that one. That's neat. Quite clean underneath really, looks like it's been restored a few years ago. That's certainly a rare sight, especially in this country. Unusual is good. We're moving along the road, we've got an AEC Marshall here. Complete with, I think, living accommodation on the back. Yep. Mighty Crane. Again, we saw this one at Smallwood Rally. The Thames Trader. A while back, someone was asking if Thames Traders ever turned up at shows. Well, here you go. Occasionally, they do. This one dates to 1965. Again, it's got living accommodation disguised on the back of it. What better way? to spend the day than sat in a field at a vintage vehicle rally like this. We've got a Ford D series here, 1967 or 68. Sorry, well, the cars are over there, so we'll go and have a look at those after. Military vehicles are there, cars are over there. This is a display arena, quite a big arena. So hopefully we'll catch some of the vehicles driving around there later. But let's have a look at this Albion, another Scottish built Albion. An Albion KL127 in 1936. Again, as with all these lorries, really nicely turned out. Got some living accommodation hit there, disguised under a period looking canvas. It is actually, isn't it? Yeah. That's really, really nice. Phone of the 1970s. Any truck show. AC Mercury G Reg. Yeah, we've seen this one around, haven't we? In the, in the milk float, we saw this at Western Park, I think. That dates to the early 1970s. Just imagine the, the rattle of glass as you drive along. I suppose we should really go looking for some cars now and over here we've got a Mark III Triumph GT6. <laughs> well we're working our way up to the classic car section but there's a few more lorries here so we think this is a Leyland, well even though it's not badged up anyway we had a quick look at the taxis, if in doubt. 
there's an old tax disc from 2014 because obviously now you don't need to have taxes they don't issue tax discs anymore um, but yeah that's beauty that is another one with the same owner it's kind of scammel talking of scammel next to the scammel register a uh, little building there we've got a scammel scarab really short one if you have a look it may not have been uploaded yet but part 10 of the original photos of british cars in the 1950s and the 1960s series will show a one of these articulated scammel scarabs um, that had a bit of an incident down in london somewhere and they actually tipped over and there's several photographs of this tipped over vehicle and it being recovered by an old recovery vehicle so um, like i say it may not be on the, the channel just yet but if you like your old scammels and this wonderful articulated petrol tanker here if you like your old scammels just keep an eye out for future uploads because part 10 of that series of old original photographs does show a scammel scarab right carrying along we've got a lovely old bedford this is an s type bedford probably that front end is most familiar to people who've seen the old green goddess fire trucks that the army used to have Bedford TK, Earl Reg, 1972 or 3, D Series Ford, magnificent Bristol, double decker. AEC recovery truck. Well, that's a proper bit of kit, that is. Can't be many things that that wouldn't pull. It's got an HF crane on it, which is a Harvey Frost. Next up in this lineup of lorries, as we make our way towards the car section, is a super original looking Foden Cropper's Garage Liverpool Limited. Wow, hopefully that doesn't get repainted. The only thing better than proper sign writing is original proper sign writing that dates to when the lorry or vehicle was in action and that's exactly what we're looking at here. It's not just wonderful. I think more and more people are going for the preservation route rather than full restoration to minty fresh condition and that's really great to see because that just that's I mean how old is that probably 60 years old something like that maybe 65 years old and it just wears its age on its sleeve <laughs> and that's perfect you know sometimes things are beyond oily ragging and you have to restore them a bit like with big dodge but um, yeah but if you can if you can keep it original because they're only original ones no way is that getting restored <laughs> yeah hopefully there's a late 60s dodge an Atkinson, Cummins powered Atkinson border, a guy. That's nice. Huh? Yeah. The gentleman that owns this has got a really nice E83 W van. Oh, is it that one? Mm. Uh, and a Foden tow truck. What's this, Dodge? Hello, you. A Dodge, wow, what's this? 1968 Dodge W200. Low mileage, slant six engine. Served in Thailand with the US Air Force. <laughs> so what's that, late, late 60s Dodge Power Wagon. Yeah, I've never seen this one before. Let's have a quick peek in the back. Very, very neat. We've made it over to the classic car section, so let's have a scoot round here. The weather seems to be holding up, so uh, fingers crossed it stays that way. The end of the line here, an MGTF. And this is an MGYB. We had a lengthy chat 
I think were the owner of this particular car, the WEM vehicles of interest, he told us quite a lot of its history. Yep, the first MGYB off the production line, 1951. That's a beautifully turned out car that is. So uh, if you like your post-war MGs, go and check out the WEM video because we have a really good close look at that one. And he demonstrates the built-in jack or jacking system on it as well, which is quite neat. Okay, next up, Mark II Escort, Morris Minor, the E-Series Vauxhall Cresta. Sporty looking Mini, L Reg. No door hinges on the outside, so that's a Mark III. Well, it would be a Mark III, but I think it's been reshelled because it hasn't got the double gutter along there, it's just got the single gutter, so I'm guessing it's possibly been reshelled. Another E-Series Vauxhall Cresta, these two normally go to shows together, normally parked up next to each other. Am I right in saying this is the latter of the two, the green one? I'm not sure which is which. Because this has got like sort of a little cross on the side and the extra little thing. Well there's a change every year or two, they yeah. did change subtly in the trim and everything so I just can't know there are differences because if you look at this, I think this is the earlier one I think, oh, okay. I think so. So that's a North Wales registration, proper old ace number plates as well, of which we approve. So yeah, it's got horizontal bars, yeah, whereas this is a very different grille on the front of this one. I think this one is probably a little bit later, but only a year or two difference, I would have thought. MGB GT, very smart, very shiny wire wheels. BMW IZ, we see a lot at local classic car shows. Lost in Cooper, B Reg, 1964. That's nice. Split window VW Camper. Ankle. Hello. Morris Thousand, a four door Morris Minor this time. G registration. Rover P6, the 2000. Under the Ford Popular, 1962. That's quite a late one. Triumph Renown. Those are lovely cars. The razor edge styling that it's shared similar to the Mayflower, but I think it's a bit more successful on these. What is it? Two, yeah, it's a Renown. Oh, Renown, okay. Got Hillman Minx, one of the Arrow series cars here. Really nice Morris Traveller alongside the Minx. Next to that, we've got a Triumph 1500. Apologies for the noise in the background. We've got lost in 10 Cambridge here, DLO 996. So that's sort of late, sort of what, 1937 or 38, somewhere around there. The Riley RM, Escort RS2000, obviously a Mark 1 Escort, two door. The standard Vanguard. This is a Phase 1 Vanguard. Phase 1 and the 1A had the Beetleback styling and the spats over the rear wheels. The Phase 2 didn't have the spats over the wheels and had the separate hump for the boot area. We can tell. Now, according to, the, according to the window, this is a Phase 1A, but it's got a Phase 1 grille on it. It looks more like a Phase 1 to me. So the Phase 1 has these multi-slatted horizontal bar grilles. Um, whereas the Phase 1A has thicker bars, a bit like that that appeared on the Phase 2. So I'm guessing, it's a bit confusing actually, that's a Shropshire registered car. It says in red 1A, but on the information below it says Phase 1. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a Phase 1 rather than the 1A. But either way, lovely car. The bonnet line changed slightly as well between the Phase 1 and the 1A and the 1 had mechanical brakes if I remember correctly mm. um, whereas the 1A had hydraulic brakes so that was a difference under the skin but visually they didn't change a great deal apart from the grille on the front lovely car rubber bumper midget here Triumph 1500 engine of course MGB Roadster on Ross Styles early 1970s the Morgan Series 3 XJ6 do I? Do I? I didn't, I didn't ignore it. <laughs> right, well, right then. Right then. You tell me about this Morgan then. Right, come on then. You've asked for it now. You tell me what is it then? What year is it? It's an 82. It's an 1982. Car. Yeah, yeah. Restored. 
Is it not? Yeah, it's wow. on 150,000 miles. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's so, and it's a Ford engine. <laughs> That's that's the alarm system. Oh, is it? That's, yeah. the, that's the security, is it? Yeah, that's the security. <laughs> at the top. Hi, we watch all your. Uh, we've seen you at all of them. All right, seen cool. All the shows. Yeah. Well, and to be honest, I don't know a great deal about them. So you fill me in. What is it? A four plus? It's it's, it's four, a four. This a is or? a sports tour. It's a four seater. Right. Okay. Now these are rarer because they're no longer made because they mm. don't meet. Uh, safety regulations. Oh, right, got you. So, but the other car to have, everybody wants a sports car. Mm. But this car is physically bigger by two inches either side. Oh, is it wider? It's is taller, it as well? Yes. Oh, right. Yeah, right. You see, the bumpers don't actually fit the mud guards. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and it's. Uh, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. 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 So that's a standard Morgan bumper. That. Right, got you. So they won't make longer bumpers. All right, just well, for these. It, right. it, it, about ten sixty six, they stopped using Ford popular bumpers on them. Did they? <laughs> <laughs> and they got these aluminium ones. Oh, got you, got you. But right. the aluminium was anodised and I mm. did a bit of hard work. I, I got them up like that with wet yeah, dry. They certainly look the part, don't they? Yes. Wow. And people wow. say, where'd you get them from? So you get to all the local shows then, do you, with it? Yes, all round here, because yeah. we see you. We, yeah. we, see <laughs> a, we see you dodge us. And, uh, mm. like, normally I'm like this. With my mouth open. <laughs> well, that's why I don't come and talk to you, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's no, great to see that one. Let's have a quick look yeah, inside. The trouble is, that you see oh. Warren Morgan, you see it's like Morris Minus. They're just a rock of them. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I don't know much about them at all, that's the thing. So uh, you've filled me in with a bit of uh, extra information. Let's have a quick peek inside then. Well, let's have a quick look inside here. Oof. Yeah. Made by a firm called Tudor. Yeah, yeah. Which is a cheap Spitz variation. Well, it was a nice chat with the Morgan. What have we got here then? A Gilburn GT. Wales's finest export. Next to that, a very similar colour 1360 Herald convertible. Austin A35. That's the commercial driver's version of the AA badge, that's off a lorry. Wolseley 1500 Mark III, 1963, bit of useful information there. I wish everyone did that. Really nice car, very similar underpinnings to the Morris Minder, but that's obviously got the B Series 1.5 litre engine or 1489cc to be precise. No idea what this is. Let's have a quick look. SS. Don't know my American muscle cars very well at all, I'm afraid. So we'll have to scoot around the back and hope there's some clues here. Chevelle. So it's a Chevrolet Chevelle SS. Oh, now this is more familiar territory. So we've got a Vauxhall Viva. And not any old Viva. This is an HB Estate. We don't see many of these at all. Super rare car, real survivor car, this one. Probably years ago we used to go and stay in a caravan in South Wales and the owner of it, he was a bit of an aficionado of HB Vivas. This was in sort of the early 1980s when they were just an old car. And he used to buy them and run them into the ground and then when they broke he used to take them up to a field and dump them in a field. We went with him once to go and retrieve some parts off one of his dumped cars in order to keep his roadworthy car on the road. And Morris. The Wolseley 1660. That's the Wolseley version of the Austin Cambridge and the, the Morris Oxford. Got a Daimler here. This is a Majestic. It was the Majestic Major. I had a four and a half litre V8. But that has like a circular grille thing here with a V emblem in it. And it's not on this car, so this is, I think, 3. Point, not 3.8 litre straight six. E type with hard top, don't see that too often. Another E type fixed head alongside that. Let's carry on along here. And the Willis Jeep. Now, oh, this looks like an oily rag, so I'm going to have to have a proper look at this one. So, it's a 1946, so it's a CJ as opposed to a military Jeep. So a quick scoot under the wire, 1946, old American turn signals, not dissimilar to the ones that I've sourced in the States for Big Dodge. 
<laughs> that's good. American baseball bat there. I think mechanically it's very similar to the wartime jeeps but these civilian jeeps the cjs have an opening tailgate they have a tailgate on the back whereas on the militaries it was a fixed panel and the spare wheel went on there if memory serves that's old jerry can that's a really nicely preserved old jeep i know a few people who'd like this These directional turn signals usually have a manufacturer's name on them. I can't see one on this. I guess. Oh, next to the Jeep we've got a Mark 54 Cortina, Rover P5B, the three and a half litre V8 powered car. That's a saloon version. Note, not the coupe. We saw a coupe last weekend. Yeah, higher roof line. But still a four-door, the coupe was a four-door as well. Nice Austin Cambridge. Beautiful car that is. I need that one. So what's this? This is the Essex, Essex, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Essex. We saw this at WEM. Yes, WEM. WEM vehicles of interest. Morris, was that a 1300? 1300, yeah. I've already been around everything. If you've done everything, be, just while I was chatting to the... Yeah, but I was <laughs> having a good look at that Jeep. Right, yeah. this is an Austin A30. You can tell that because of the chrome grille, no flashing indicators, and the gutter. Right? And the gutter on the A30, the gutter goes across the top of the screen and down the side, whereas on the A35, the side gutter comes along above the doors and then down the A pillar, down to here. Lots of interesting differences. The MGB GT, nice blue, and Renault Gordini. Ford Cortina, I think that's a 1600E, one of the posh ones. The Sunbeam Talbot Tour we've seen quite a few times. The Wolsey 1500, this is an early-ish one. The smaller front side lights. The later 1500s, um, like the one we saw over the back there, they have this sort of Morris 1000 combined side light and indicator on the front. Nice old Miller lamps. We like period accessories. Ford Mustang alongside that little standard. What's that a standard nine, is it? Yeah, little nine, 1932. The Rover P4, this is this. It says Rover 90. There we go. The Triumph 1500, very original. In no brown. Today, Are they all 1500? No dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's really original paint on that one. The little ones are 1300s. I can't, I can't a, remember. Got a series that. 2, Morris Minor here. Oh, of course, the split. Yep, split windscreen. Yep. Oh, I might have said it was a minor thousand. Oh dear. I know I, Vivo HA. I can't forgive myself now because I said the A30 <laughs> was a 35. Oh and dear. And I'm literally oh, always oh. going on about the differences. Back to school for you, sunshine. I know. I know. Right. Terrible. I Two door, know, Ford Escort. I might be making it's not rally. a bit stupid because <laughs> I might have called it a 30. Right. And I just can't remember. Right. Well, this, is a, this is a rare, fairly base spec. Uh, Mark II Escort two-door that hasn't been rallyfied. Yeah, it's not been rallyfied. Over here we've got a Highlight MM. This is a late MM cheese grater grill, but the early Series Twos also had the cheese grater grill. But you can tell the difference because it's got the curvy bonnet mascot. Oh, this is that the, one with the, the bonnet trim. Engine. This is the one with that fancy engine and the alter converting engine. There's actually a separate video on the channel all about this because this turned up at the Whitchurch evening meet last year there's a bit of info in the screen here but we had quite a chat with the owner of this car alter overhead valve conversion that's a seriously rare little car like i say there is a separate standalone video just all about this car elsewhere on the channel so have a look for that one when you're done here you can always tell an earlier car as well because they have bigger cutouts on the wheel arches some of these cars have got the later wheel arches which hug the the tyre more closely, much deeper. 
but the MMs and I think the Series 2s originally had these much more cut away wheel arches because they're only a bolt on the wings front and rear only bolt on on the Morris Minor so it's quite easy to change them and they're quite hard probably to replace these now if they've rotted out so many people just put the later wings on them right there's Sunbeam Talbot 90 a Tora version again really rare machine Got like a three position roof okay <laughs> I've always liked the interior of my 1950s Roots Group cars, I just think they look fantastic. Mm, it's a beauty, isn't it? The Rosetta MG T Series, I think. I don't think the dash is original, it's a beautiful car. Oh, next row, the sun's come out, lovely, and we've got a very original looking Austin 6, or to be precise, an Austin 186 York Saloon, 1935, let's just have a quick scoot under the wire here, because in the window are lots and lots of old tax discs. Velology is the uh, collecting of old tax discs, so a velologist would love this particular car. Super duper original. Can't really see probably, but yeah, it's very original in there. Original trim, original leather seats. Very nice. You don't see some. Mm, yeah, the wind deflectors on the door there. Thing print. I don't know. Oh, the little badge in the horn yeah. centre there. You don't see too many of these late thirties big Austins. I see a few Cambridges, which are the 10 horsepower cars, but not so many of these 18s. And the 6 tells us it's got a 6 cylinder engine, of course. Helpfully mentioned on the grill. <laughs> the Morris Cowley, a bullnose Cowley. That's a very smart car indeed. Three stud wheel fixings, which is usually a sign of a Cowley as opposed to the Oxford. The National Benzol 5. Got a National Benzol 2 gallon can on the side there. Yes. Really nice little car, late, mid late 1920s. What's this, mini based? Austin Ant. You have to watch where you walk around here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Austin Ant, ADO 19. It's made to replace the mini mode. Series 1 Morris 8 Tora. Oh. Beautiful little car. Console Capri. So that's the rakish coupe version of the console classic, really. And another one alongside it, a pair of them. Good grief. A pair of these very rare fours. So this is a Capri GT. It's a smart machine, isn't it? Nice doggy over there. Austin 7 Ruby. Something American, which I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Is it a Dodge? Phantom GT owner somewhere, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. Midget. One of five E Anglia. Oh, it's a super, so does that make it the one, two, three? E? I think that's a one, two, three E Anglia, isn't it? And here's the interior of that Anglia super, the one, two, three E. Really smart, looks really original here, but look at those door trims. Beauty. Here we've got a Fiat 500, another Triumph 1500, again looks very original. And over here, Morris 10, this is a 10M. These were built either side of World War II. The grills were slightly different, this is a post-war grill. Um, the earlier grills have a slightly different badge and a slightly squarer badge on the top of there, but otherwise they're very similar. Like the big <coughs> version of the yeah, it's a big version of the Series E. This is a 10 horsepower car. Bit of information there. Now. Yeah, you are right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's the 10M built either side of World War Two. Got an MGA Roadster, very nice. Oh, a four-door Ford Model Y long rad. We've talked all about long rads and short rads in previous videos. Yeah, yeah, both rear hinge doors, aren't they? Yeah, I thought it'd be one or the other. It's got optional uh, little semaphore indicators mounted on the screen pillar there. No oh, Great looking little car. Very American influenced styling on these. 
This is the eight horsepower, same engine pretty much as that in the Angley that we've got sat at home. <laughs> I had hoped to actually uh, book into this one, but I left it too late, unfortunately. That's a lot. Mark III Cortina. 30s Ford. Ooh, Mark same three. engine as a 50s Ford. Yeah, Mark III GT6. Good. The Riley Kestrel, the Riley version of the ADO 16, the Austin and the Morris 1100. There's not so many of these around now. 1966 Mark II, Riley Kestrel, one former keeper, imported from Belfast. Cost new £781. Nice badges there. We've got another row and another row of vintage and classic cars. And here we've got a Sunbeam Alpine. Next to that, a much, much older standard. It's a vintage standard. Not quite sure what model it is. Possibly the SLO 4, something like that. 14 horsepower, is it? Is that what it says? It's a Stratford. Well, this is an advert. Okay. Really nice. Wow, it's beauty, isn't it? I love the way the gauges are over off to the left there mm. for the passenger. Yeah, so it's a beautiful interior. Oh, and an E83W van. Now I know who owns this one. This is the first time I've seen this one in daylight. What a great survivor this is. If I remember right, the gentleman that owns it, this was originally belonged to his father. It's been sat in his shed for many, many years. And only fairly recently has actually returned to the road within the last year or so. And I saw this many years ago, but it was in a really dark shed and I couldn't really see much of it. There was no floor in it or anything. So it's really nice to see it out and about. And this man is very much an advocate of the oily rag, as you can tell. And why not? Wow, that's really cool. Hey. It's first time I've seen it outside. <laughs> this Mark IV Spitfire and the Austin Somerset next to it, we followed in as we came down the back lanes, which are somewhere over there, and we were in the standard eight, so it's quite a nice little convoy. Austin Somerset, this was a replacement for the Austin A40 Devon, 1200cc, four-cylinder overhead valve engine. Yes, indeed. And then Lanchester LD10, this was a Briggs-bodied car. Uh, Briggs uh, were taken over by Ford. Yep, pre-select the gearbox. And Austin Metropolitan, or Nash Metropolitan, as the earlier cars were called. Yeah, the American ones were Nash, because Austin made them initially just for Nash for export, and then Austin then sold their own I really, really like that. Series one two E-types e with a hard top with the hard top that looks so good I think yeah I couldn't see it before because there's a few people milling around but yeah really yeah, nice pair of E-types <laughs> Mark 1 Fiesta <laughs> like HC Viva 1978 like a lightweight if you took the bumpers off TR3 <laughs> isn't this like similar to the SC engine no, this is a, this is a Vanguard. This, uh, this has a standard Vanguard engine. And it's related to the engine in the Grey Fergie as well. And then really nice pre-war Riley on the end here. Glacier Motor Club. Mm. Riley Nine Horse Lynx Special Series Tour, 1933. The sun's come out. <laughs> what a beauty that is. I've just noticed things are for sale. So a quick shifty. Trying to hold handbook there. Cortina, some badges. Do we need anything?
Well, we're going to go and have a look at the Wall of Death now, the Ken Fox, the famous Ken Fox Wall of Death. I've not seen this for a few years, so let's go and have a shifty. Happy memories of riding one of these little mopeds, one of these little rally mopeds when I was a kid. I used to sit on the petrol tank and uh, Dad used to ride it. Then when I was big enough, I'd ride it myself. A little 49cc, I think it's motor Bacane engine, if I remember right. But yeah, the rally runabout, great little things. Takes me right back. Here in the auto jumble area at the Molpas Vintage Rally. Uh, we're just going to head back to the car now and have a sandwich just to keep body and strength up. And there's a little standard eight raising the tone in the public car park. Looks quite nice in the sun, almost looks shiny. Just wandering over to a classic caravan area and there's this Volvo, it's a 360 GLE but one of the booted cars. I can't remember the last time I saw one of these, such a rarity, I mean the hatchback ones are fairly thin on the ground. But there's a lot more of those around than there are the booted ones I'm sure. And my friend of mine's mum had a, had a hatchback one of these my mate's mum and uh, she had it parked on the road and my mate was trying to get his starter motor freed up on his Spitfire so he started rocking it in gear on the road but what he'd forgotten to check is that it was the ignition was still on and the choke was on full so he, he was rocking the car to free off the starter motor and it turned the engine over it caught because the choke was on full and the ignition was on and this Spitfire shot off down the road and it crashed into his mum's 360 hatchback that she had a 360 GLS that's my abiding memory of these 300 series Vauxhall uh, Volvos. Hey? Yeah, she had it repaired, but it dented all the door in because a Spitfire ran into the side of it. There's a few more classic caravans here as well. We've got a car light, a very nice Mark 1 Ford uh, Granada, 3 litre V6 car, so that'll be a good tow car. It's a nice tow car. I've got a Cheltenham along here. And these were fire, are these fiberglass? No, the fiberglass fronts. But, sorry? Oh, the Sweeney had these, yeah, yeah, that's right, yes. What on earth is this, a wagonette? It's another one I've never seen before. Mm, Terror up mot motorcycle for sale, it's a French bike. 
a couple of bicycles, but it's this uh, caravan I'm really interested in. Looks like it's in British Rail colours, doesn't it? That sort of colour, like that Foden that's over the back, you remember? This way. An amazing machine, that is. <laughs> wow. What do I spy over here but a, com a camper version of the uh, Bedford CA, quite a late one on the G, the Dormobile, so Martin Walter. This is based on a very late Bedford CA, not long before the CF came in. Fiberglass bodied these were the early ones based on the what, sort of Mark 1 Bedford CA were all more steel I guess, but this by this point in time fiberglass was really taking off and even the, even the front wings are fiberglass. So you've got a metal front panel, as you can see. I think most of the rest, certainly the wings, are fiberglass. <laughs> really popular, these old camper vans now. There's always lots and lots of classic tractors here at Molpus, so we'll just have a, a quick shuffle just to get an idea of what's here. Lots of Massey Ferguson, this is Massey Ferguson and the Massey Harris corner got a Fordson this is an E27N major this is a standard Fordson about 1940 or thereabouts hand crank start only no electric starters on those although you might be able to convert them now but back in the day they were certainly hand start very original looking Ferguson Lance old dog <laughs> yeah we'll just have a quick whistle along here Bit of oily rag goodness here. David Brown, Leyland, Massey Ferguson, Ferguson, they're all here. It's a very cool Ferguson. It is, isn't it? It's more my kind of size, I think. That is very nice. Just want, I just feel like reaching for an oily rag and giving that a quick wipe over. Like that. Some mighty John Deere's here. Don't want to get run over by one of those. We've got a four. Well, we're going to head back from the tractor area down towards the main arena because I think the classic cars will be driving around fairly soon so I'd like to see that. <laughs> mm, we've got a, a little grey Fergie, TEA 20, complete with weather equipment. <laughs> it's a very, very patinated Fergie with a seat off something else. Massey Ferguson 35. <laughs> so you'd be glad of that roof if it was chucking it down when you're working the field. Boo. What's this one? Isn't it? Fordson. Wow. Tractors large and small here. Let's see what we've got down here as we make our way back towards the classic car area. David Brown, I do like these. I really like the shape of the cowling and those sort of knee guards and everything keeps the weather off your knees. Very smart indeed. An immaculately restored Fergie 135, Fords and Dexter, McCormick International, another Massey Ferguson 135. 
bit of pattern here. Built in 1954. Lots and lots of internationals. The David Brown, select a Matic, complete with cab. It's time for the old cars to come around the arena now. So we've got the Austin 18 York. Series one, Morris. Is that MGYB?
the uh, the owner, Sam Cook, saw this in the scrapyard. He used it to, to, to school on it. He saw it in the scrapyard and rescued it. Absolutely beautiful condition. That's a hard size boat with a two stroke engine. This Ford Transit, but you're on the old this one in preservation. That is better than OB. And this little Ford 330 man, look at that, beautiful. And a Bedford, a lovely Bedford with a, uh, a dummy load, which presumably acts as a living accommodation. That's from the Staffordshire. Absolutely lovely. Now, what about this boat? Absolutely superb. Cracking job of doing this. A big ball that's 21, <coughs> should be an 8 wheeler. Again, I think they use it for living accommodation. Uh, the Scannel Scarab, used by the British Rail in the thousands. Thank you. Absolutely brilliant. How about this? That's amazing. Look at the first commercial. Oh, amazing. Uh, Chinese Six Leyland, very unusual the Chinese Six, we call them the Chinese Six for the two axes at the front. A lot of Leyland ended up with one mile x ray units for nice, beautiful little metal. Again, it looks as though he's just finished work with a dummy mold. Now the first will be a double deck of buses. This one is driven by young John, I think. Although oh, well, there he is in the back. John, what we can see of that? Ten miles, I'll take it. Another scary. You see, you're full of the vehicles and the, uh, the engine is to the left of the presence. But sometimes we're a bit quick down the right hand side. You should say, oh, Send the van out to the local station and put it back on the trail the way then it carried on working up there. Amazing vehicle. The driver could uncouple the trailer by leaning out of the window with a long stick. <coughs> so everybody had a scrabble driver's stick. Beautiful, that is. Now then, this Dodge, very rare. And the bugs are not with case bags. Was it case bags? I don't think the, 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 isn't that nice, isn't that so lovely to see? Electric vehicle, it's all about me, electric vehicle, then electric vehicle, and they got four, a nice land rover, superb colours, and not, is it series two, that? Now we have a series one, doesn't that look like <laughs> What a superb vehicle, shot and steel works. Then I can jump some of it. Beautiful. Okay, I'm not eating. Okay, uh, John Summer got a big piece of Layla Doctor for this. So I'm so
while waiting for the steamers to come round, we'll have a quick look at the military section. Big old scammel there, fantastic. Is that an explorer? It's not, I'll, I'll see if it's here, the one. The Jeep. There's no shortage of Jeeps here today. An AEC Matador, another World War II vehicle. Some, some, some sort of riot fighting uh, Land Rover. Got a lightweight, a Unimog. What have we got here? Is this a Rio or a White? I can never remember. Or a Bedford. This is an RL. This is a militarised version of the Bedford S type four wheel drive as opposed to the two wheel drive civilian vehicle and one of the forward control Land Rovers. A military Jeep, a Willis or a Ford. This one, this a man, M A N. Somewhat newer. Well, we saw one of these at Smallwood, so it could be one of these. These often pulled things like bomb trailers and such like in the Second World War. Nice, correct fire extinguisher. Pyrene. What engine have we got lurking in here? A little side valve engine. No Ford. It's a Ford 8 or 10. Similar to the Anglia anyway. Oh, that's really nifty that. Oh, here's this mighty lorry we saw at Smallwood and we thought it might be Russian. But the owner, I seem to remember, popped a note under the video to say it's from the Ukraine. Maybe this information sheet will tell us more. Let's have a quick look here. Yeah, Ukraine. I've got it right this time. These were built from 1957 to 94. Heavy duty off road truck, cargo truck, V8 diesel, five speed manual gearbox. That's quite the machine. This looks superb. If you check out the Smallwood video from earlier this year, 2022, you'll see this being demonstrated on a little off road course that they had set up, and it did look really, really neat. Here we're in the classic motorcycle section. We've got a Greaves old scrambler and a James a BSA sidecar combination. An Excelsior, these were a fairly low cost small engine motorcycle of the day. What's this one? A new map 1928. Very nice too. Is this something Eastern European? And BSA, Suzuki, a little scooter there, Heinkel Tourist. NSU quickly moped, Francis Barnett, another cheap bike, Villiers powered, those engines found their way into all sorts of machines. Another Villiers powered bike here, this is an Excelsior. The Bruff Superior Special. Mm. I think we'll have to have a closer look at that. That's quite tasty, isn't it? Some engine assisted cycles. We've got a cycle master just built into the back wheel. You'd buy the back wheel complete with the engine already in it. Whereas this is a power pack, so you could fit this to any normal bike, it just mounts above the back wheel. There were lots of different versions of this, mainly in the 1940s, 1950s, the sort of an economical way of getting around. You can see the roller that just pushes against the tyre. The Sun, 
we won't see too many of those now. They appear to have a few more classic lorries tucked away around here. Beginning with uh, this wonderful Bedford, S-Type 1953. What a beauty that is. Now yeah, this Foden we've seen many times in various rallies we've been to and I think I even did did I do a separate video about this one? Maybe, maybe not, but what a beauty. I just love this kind of thing. Old Atkinson there. The RF from Sandbatch of course, which isn't too far away from here. Foden. Another Thames trader. This one a little tipper truck. Something a bit modern. We won't dwell on that, but down the end here is another. This is a third Thames trader we've seen today. So I'm hoping any enthusiasts of Thames traders are happy. It's a, we don't, for some reason, we just don't seem to see many of these. I mean, I guess because of where we are. We see plenty of Fodens and ERFs, and even quite a few Albions, despite being Scottish and quite a long way away. Um, but not so many Thames traders, so it's good to see the ones that are here today. At the end of the row, another ERF, Gardner 120 powered, early 1970s. Over here, got a moggy pickup. This one used to be a van. I remember seeing this one around. It was a van, then it disappeared for a little while, and it's re-emerged as a pickup. Super original Series One Landy. Listen. Wow, well, that's great. That is. But over here is a little Ford E eighty three W pickup. We saw the van with windows a little bit earlier on. And this one I haven't seen for quite a while. I think last time I saw this was at London now at the Victorian Extravaganza, but I've not seen it for a few years, so it's good to see it out and about. It's been restored a while, I've seen it before, but a few years ago. Yeah. It's just really well looked after, isn't it? No. Love the old sign writing, it's like gold leaf. What a bonny little pickup truck that is. So this is the, the E83W as it was known. This one's badged as Thames. With the little badges on the bonnet there. The earlier ones were Fordsons and there weren't a huge number of differences. I mean these came out in 1938 and were built all Yeah, yeah it's Ford Thames. And these were these were built all the way up until 1957, which is the year of the van that we've got tucked away at home. EY is a North Wales registration. And this one lives on Anglesey, which of course is in North Wales. These were rated as half ton to 10 weight or half ton trucks. That was their load capacity, although I'm sure many of them were loaded up well beyond that. Very low geared, 30 mile an hour, any more than that, and you really you risk shaking your teeth out. Beautiful little pickup truck. Little drop side forward pickup. My first E83W came from North Wales, actually not far from where this one's based. I found it up the Conway Valley, it was in the field in 1989, a friend of mine's got that now. And it used to work in and around London, now at Windsor Garages. So if you ever see a little pickup around NCA 129, it originated in North Wales. <laughs> Just going to have a walk around the uh, steam rollers and the traction engines while I just momentarily stopped here in the arena. So we've got an Invicta. Just a warning, ladies and gentlemen. Do not touch the engine before. There's an Invicta as well. Beautiful. Watch it, children, please. The amount of work that's involved in keeping these old girls going. 
can't be underestimated. An advance, because that's a that's a chunky fella, isn't it? We've got a few of the miniature engines here as well. Here's one of the another another Sentinel steam lorry. How fantastic is that? That's a beautiful thing. Speed 20 miles an hour. Steam lorry. It's just like a steam locomotive inside here, but it is a lorry, I promise you. Quick peek underneath. This is where it all goes on. Lots of heat and drips. Absolutely wonderful. If I was going to get into the steam world, which I'm not, one of these could definitely tempt me. At the back here is the other Sentinel steam wagon. Absolutely wonderful. We've seen this for many years at these rallies. And it never gets old having a look at that. In the, in the uh, livery of Tarmac Limited over in Wolverhampton, just a little way south of where we are today. <laughs> Sentinel, of course, was based down in Shrewsbury, which isn't that far from here either, just down the A49. It's very much a local local make. And quick peek in through the window if we can. That's so us pretty much done with a Saturday of the two day event that is the Molpus Yesteryear Rally. Little standard brought us here, so we're going to stagger back, take a cross country route, and we'll head back at a very leisurely pace. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope it was of interest. And please have a quick look around the rest of the channel while you're here. Harley invested in some bulbs for his uh, little workshop. So that was a very good buy. 
Thank you very much for watching and more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now. Bye. 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 Yes, bye.